As um, Miss Morgan here, just going to do another um, art video with you guys. Today we're going to do something really fun that I enjoy called um, Picasso style or cubism portraits. And if you look over here on the side of the screen, you see two examples of Picasso's cubist portraits. The one at the top is called um, a portrait of a woman in beret and checkered dress. I'm going to go on and plug this in so we'll get started. Um, and so if you see the one at the top left corner, um, that's one example of one of Picasso's paintings. And then the one at the bottom is called um, Portrait of Dora Mar. And he has several Cubist paintings. Um, these are super easy and super um, fun to do and do it a lot of different ways. Just so that you can be able to see my whole paper, I just, I'm using a smaller sheet of paper, but you can use any size paper you want, but this is just so that it'll make it easy. When we do these portraits, there is no right or wrong way to do it. But what I do want to encourage you to think about is I want to encourage you, I'm, I'm going to flip that, hold on. What I do want to encourage you to do is to kind of be unique and different, use different facial features. Um, so, you know, if you are doing this at home and your sister uses this nose, maybe you can use this nose or use something that's kind of different. Notice you can recognize what all of these facial features are, but they don't necessarily look realistic. I'll show you another example. So here are some facial shapes. They're kind of unique and interesting. Again, noses. This is all mouth, eyes. And so when Picasso did this, he didn't even make two eyes look exactly the same. That's why I enjoy doing these so much, because they do not have to be perfect at all. And here's another example. So if you're at home, and maybe you have an iPad or a parent or somebody helping you, y'all can search and you can find like Picasso portrait ideas, and you'll see things like this. Um, I just got these online sometimes. And I like to do these a lot of times. Um, any age level is good for this. But what we're going to do is we are going to think about our placement on our paper. So I want to draw, um, I'll, I'll just start with a face shape. And it doesn't even have to be perfect. It can be kind of lumpy. And then I want to be thinking about this as almost like two faces. And I am going to go on and do a nose there in the middle and then the rest of the face. This, mine looks like it's almost going to be, it's going to be really symmetrical. And Picasso did not exactly make it symmetrical. And you can keep on looking at those examples on the side for help with that. Okay, and then, let me see here. I'm going to do kind of a wacky eye. I'm just starting with marker, but you can use any thing that you want to. I'm going to use a wacky eye. And then I'll use another one. Over here, again, there's no one right or wrong way to do it. And it does have the potential to look a little bit scary. So don't worry if you think that yours doesn't look right. There's no right or wrong. Okay, we're going to do some mouths now. So there was another... Spanish artist named Salvador Dali and he had a really curly mustache so I'm going to use this is actually by you know this artwork is kind of inspired by Pablo Picasso who's a Spanish artist but I'm going to use kind of a curl like Salvador Dali might have had and then what do I want to do so we're thinking about this kind of on either side of this line so it does not necessarily have to be the same thing going on Okay, I'm going to have to get more creative with mine. Mine could probably look even better. But, okay, I'll do a little eyebrow right over here. Let's just see how that looks. And then we'll do some hair. Let's see, how do I want to do my hair? Okay, some of y'all might be at home. You might be kind of feeling a little bit wild and crazy. 
You might be kind of getting tired of staying at home. So you can you can play around with this a lot and make it however you want it to look. Look, I could do long hair on one side and spiky hair on the other side. That wouldn't be bad. That's okay. And then I'm just going to go on. I have a neck there, so I'm going to go on and make some shoulders and just the line for the little shirt. Okay. So I really feel like I could even do maybe something different to make it even more creative. But um, I'm going to leave it like it is now, and I'm going to just add some color. This is a really fast and easy way to explore and um, be creative. This is a great project for markers. Those of you who have lots of markers at home or you like to work with markers. When I do markers, I'm trying to do straight lines. And once I decide which direction I'm going, so for this one I'm going up and down. Once I decide which direction I go, I need to try and stay um, consistent so that my marker coloring doesn't accidentally look too messy. Have you ever felt that way where your marker coloring looks messy? So if you don't like the way your first one does, you can see about adding more detail. Um, adding more effects, but sometimes it's better to just kind of leave it simple. And see what happens after you're done coloring. And the worst thing, you know, the worst thing that might happen is you get done coloring and you decide you still don't like it. That's all right. Okay, so there's my red side of my face. Okay, this is going to be a Christmas lady. All right, so I'm going to use green on this side. Red and green are our complementary colors. They're across from each other on the color wheel. If you search online, there are thousands of pictures of examples of Picasso. What I usually search for is Picasso style portraits. And the movement that this was part of, Picasso Kind of had lots of different periods of his life and moods, types of arts that he made. But this movement is called Cubism. It uses a lot of shapes. All right. Do you see how if I keep my marker consistent that it makes the coloring end up look neat? Pretty neat. Did any of y'all get to do the Memphis Cityscape from a few weeks ago? I saw a few pictures, I think. So I'm going to do that. All right, there's a purple lip on this side. What do I want on this other side? I'm going to make it yellow. Purple and yellow are two more complementary colors there. And you know what? I'll go on and I'll make this one be yellow also. Okay, I think I'm kind of liking this. What do y'all think? Is it too wacky for you? Huh. If you're an artist, you might say, too wacky? Never. It would never be too wacky for me. Okay, let's see. We're going to see what this person would look like with some gray hair. And on, Have you ever seen somebody who has gray hair and then part of their hair is still kind of white? So on this gray side, I'm not even going to color in all the spaces. I'm going to leave some white there. Okay. And then the other side, guess what? It's 
going to be the very wild orange. Let's see here. I wonder if I can do my coloring in. Can you hear Jenny in the background? <laughs> my kids have been liking to go outside and play, but right now it's really cold outside, so we have not gotten to go outside as much. Okay. So, I mean, kind of when I do hair, I don't always like to color in all the spaces, but even if you leave some white spaces, it might look kind of like shiny there. But even if you do that, still keep it neat. Don't Try not to be too messy with it. Okay, so those are all the colors I've used so far. I've not used any pink yet. So I'm going to make a pink for the shirt. This is a great lesson in creativity and color. And you can think about using your complementary colors, warm or cool colors, anything. Okay. So now I'm done with that part, and I usually do like to add, um, you know, something in the background. And I could still add something in the background, but I kind of like, uh, I might not color it all the way in. Since we're using markers, sometimes it's hard to use markers and make your background exactly what you want it to be. Since this is um, within the cubist movement, why don't I start doing some shapes and stuff? Oops. Gotta fix that guy. Okay. Okay. And um just remember that as long as you're trying and you're being creative, that's all that matters. Okay. The only reason I chose these colors right over here is because they are some that I did not use um, already in my face. Okay, so that's kind of what I have done there. Um, I'm not even so sure that I love that, but um, I don't know. I'm not sure that I love it. I like the face and the colors, but I don't know. If I like the background or if it would have been just as well, they'll just leave it plain and white. Something that Pablo Picasso always did with his artwork is he always wanted to. Let me make sure. I don't want to tell you a story. Okay, Picasso would sign his artwork and he always had a date on his artwork. So I'm going to go on and write the date down here. This is 414 or April 14th. And then I ran out of room, so I'm going to do 2020 over there. And um, and so that's pretty much what we're going to do right there. Okay. Add some dates to your artwork, and then maybe after the quarantine and after all of this is over, you'll be able to go back and see what all you created during this. Okay. Thank you so much for sticking with me, and um, I hope to see you guys again very soon.